we are going to learn about a translation strategy especially in learning the characteristics of a language that affect a translation result so i'm going to share my screen to all of you so that you can see our material for today you can uh, uh, take some notes if you think that it is useful to add to your knowledge or to take some uh, outline or a uh, summary of our material for today. Yeah, as you can see on your monitor, our subtopic for today, that's about meaning based translation. Okay, wait a minute, I'll make it bigger. Yeah, meaning based translation means as I explained last week, translation, uh, especially when we translate uh, one language into another language, we have to uh, transfer first the meaning and then later on we will uh, convey, uh, we will form the structure based on the uh, target language structure. So, yeah, uh, in this uh, course you will see some abbreviations SL stands for source language, or sometimes you find SLT, source language text, and the second abbreviation is TL, stands for target language, and the third one, RL, it's the same with target. Uh, another abbreviation, it is called receptor language. Yeah, uh, last week we studied about what is translation, what is the meaning of translation. So translation consists of changing from one state or form to another. It means that we change, yeah? We transfer the meaning from one language to another language. And also later on, after we, we uh, gain the meaning, and then we uh, form also uh, the structure of the target language text. So uh, first outline, uh, please remember that we gain or we transfer first the meaning. And then after transferring the meaning, after getting the meaning, and then we uh, transfer also, we change also the formula, the structure, yeah, based on the target language formula or structure. Yeah, according to Catford, yeah, uh, again, we review uh, the definition of translation. Uh, those three experts, yeah, uh, we usually see those names while we are uh, uh, browsing about translation theories. Yeah, those are, uh, these experts are usually uh, most known in translation theories. So based on Ketfer, translation is the replacement. Underline the word replacement. Yeah, I mean we we replace the textual material. We transfer. Yeah, we transfer the meaning of the textual material, not in speaking. Yeah, as I told you, in speaking we usually known as interpreting. Yeah, we directly interpret the meaning of the first speaker yeah to the second speaker so that they both they uh know or uh they know what are they speaking about we need interpreter yeah so in textual material we call uh the the doer of the translation is translator okay so According to Catford, translation is the replacement of textual material in one language, we call it source language, by equivalent textual means equivalent uh, as 
if we find difficult word for example in bahasa Indonesia uh, menjamu if we find the meaning in English the first word yeah the first word written in the model or, or written in the dictionary menjamu means uh, menjaga means uh, to look after take care of yeah so that's the equivalent sometimes we don't find uh, an equivalent word uh, from a source language in tl because the word is uh, a structural name for example as i told to pizza in bahasa indonesia there is no any kind of food pizza in bahasa indonesia so we just borrow the word pizza from english so we borrow the word to into bahasa indonesia and also uh maybe in uh filipino also uh filipina philippine Philip, uh, filipina people the yeah they may be uh borrow some english words into filipino language because the the words there is no any equivalent words in the filipina yeah in filipino so they uh borrow the words into bahasa in uh, bahasa filipino or philippine uh, language the second one translation consists in reproducing underline the word reproducing in the receptor in the receptor language the closest natural equivalent again we see here equivalent yeah underline the word equivalent yeah equivalent uh, uh, refers to the exact meaning yeah the exact meaning the exact word uh, to uh, re to refer to uh, something for example you find a book yeah a book in bahasa indonesia we also have the same thing the same product we call it buku yeah uh, in Philip in uh, Philippines also, uh, I don't know the the translation or the equivalent word for book in uh, Filipino. So equivalent means the exact name of the same, the exact name uh, of the uh, of the uh, the thing, yeah, the product, yeah, the stuff. So uh, we have. Uh, the same thing but different names because we have different language so that's called equivalent here equivalent or non-equivalent okay translation is a craft of uh, a craft consisting in attempt to replace yeah again we see here a word a verb replace a written message yeah again yeah i underline textual yeah written message yeah so we don't transfer the meaning while we are speaking directly to other people yeah we call it interpreting not translating or translation translation specifically for textual material yeah not oral material okay so this is uh these three verbs yeah have the same meaning replacement yeah reproducing replace yeah okay so we transfer it's the the uh, those three verbs refer to the same meaning with transfer yeah we transfer the meaning from one language into another language yeah all right we continue yeah again translation is the rendering render yeah to take yeah to convey to get yeah translation into rend uh, is the rendering of the source language text into the target language text so as to ensure that yeah we have to ensure while we are translating a text we have to ensure that the first one the service meaning yeah so I have to review again. We have to transfer the meaning first rather than the structure. After gaining, after getting, after reproducing the meaning, and then we uh, arrange the structure based on the 
target language structure. Okay, so we have to ensure ourselves our translation result, yeah, has the surface meaning is the same meaning with the target text, and we convey, yeah, we reform, yeah, we uh, we have to modify, we have to restructure the structure from the target into. Uh, from the source into the target. For example, in Bahasa Indonesia, uh, saya sedang mendengarkan video ini. Saya sedang, ya. Yeah? In, uh, if you know the structure of present continuous tense in English, so we use verbing. So I am listening to this video now. So we don't. Uh, I listened using verb too. Yeah, if you if you know the the structure of English present continuous tense, the structure of English using verb ing to be plus verb ing, but in Bahasa Indonesia we use uh, only sedang, yeah, sedang, okay, sedang and then uh, followed by the verb sedang mendengarkan in Bahasa in English we use verb uh, verb ing, yeah. Uh, after the to be. If the subject is I, the to be is M, the present to be I am listening to this video now. Okay, so these two points, we have to ensure that we get the two, uh, these two points while we are translating. Yeah, so we have to conclude that translation is the transfer of meaning contained in one set of language, yeah, or we call it uh, bahasa sumber or source language, science into another set of language, another set of language to another language, yeah, to which language that we transfer the textual material, yeah. Okay, so this is called uh source language and this call this is called target language so we have two uh languages from uh yeah we call it the the source language text and the target language text the translation process involves a whole set of extra language criteria okay yeah this will be our subtopic for today yeah which language uh, characters, yeah, which English char uh, language characters will affect the translation result. So there are so many uh, linguistic uh, char uh, language characters. Yeah, language in translation. So language consists of two things, namely form, or we can say it's syntactic form, yeah, syntactic. Yeah, syntax. Okay, so form and the second one meaning. Yeah, uh, we we uh, we say form is uh, uh, is also structure or grammar, right? In uh, making a, a complete sentence, we need words. Sometimes we need phrase. Sometimes we need clause. Sometimes yeah. Uh, words, phrases, and clauses. This is not a complete sentence, but if we group uh, word, phrases, and clauses into a complete meaning, so we call it sentence. Yeah, many sentences. Yeah, uh, two uh, or more sentences. They are called paragraph. Yeah, uh, the paragraph has its own cohesive meaning. So that's called paragraph. Yeah, surface structure of language is the structural part of the language, which is actually seen in print or heard in speech. Yeah, OK, uh, we can find the structure by learning the, the language because uh, as I as we know, every language has its own unique structure or form. All right. Deep structure of language is the thing or uh, idea that something represents. Okay. Um, besides the structure, 
yeah the language also has the represents uh, its own meaning sometimes we we don't uh, transfer or we don't translate word per word because it's idiomatic idiomatic expression because idiomatic expression has its own meaning yeah different from the the separate lexical items for example um the okay the man is uh the man is a uh, bookworm yeah bookworm if we translate uh lexically book buku worm um chatting yeah or kutu yeah uh but uh kutu buku has its own unique meaning if we translate um uh, idiomatically we uh, semantically we have uh, suka membaca yeah okay so we don't transfer idiomatic meaning lexically but it has its own meaning yeah all the words yeah has all the words have its own meaning different meaning from the lexical items all right so first we have to know that form is the servant structure of language we call it syntax and if it uh, uh, refers to the meaning we call it semantics we go on to the next page language and culture we, we cannot separate culture from language yeah because language is uh, a kind of uh, uh, a production of the culture itself yeah every culture has its own unique uh, material so language is a kind of material of production uh, derived from the culture all right based on susan bastion and mcquire in their uh book uh, in 2000 in 1980 they defined that language is the heart within the body culture and it is the interaction between the two that results in the continuing of life energy the same way that the surgeon operating on the heart cannot neglect the body surrounds it so we cannot separate language from culture or culture from language, vice versa. According to Yuri Lotman, yeah, he was a Soviet uh, semiotician. He stated that no language can exist, no language can exist unless, unless it is steeped, yeah, unless it is related in the con uh, context of culture. And no culture can exist which does not have its center. Yeah. What is the center? The center is the natural of the language. Okay. So this is why before we uh, learn about translation, yeah, we learn uh, first the language and the culture of the people who use the, the language. Yeah. According to Edward Sapir, language is a guide to social reality and that human beings are the mercy or generosity of the language that has become the medium of expression. So language is a medium of expression. In reality, there is no two languages are very su sufficiently similar. As I explained just now, uh, a language or different language has its own unique structure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to be considered as representing the same social reality, the worlds in which different societies live are distinct worlds, not merely the same world with different labels attached. Yeah, these are the examples uh, how culture uh, affect the translation. As we know, in our common or general knowledge, in Finnish, we know they are uh, they are known. Yeah, mostly in variation of snow, and in Arabic, they mostly known. Uh, the unique thing they are the variation of the camel and in english of course we see also the different uh, the 
difference of uh, culture. They are tend to differ light and water. And in France, we also tend to see the the unique culture. They are uh, known mostly in types of bread. And in Japan, in their social status, the people, a range of imperative from abject humility in uh, to imperial decree. It, it was based on uh, Hofer's statement in 1980. Yeah, and in Africa also, the, uh, the, the African, yeah, a culture putting food in front of the other person door means that they want to share the food to other people. Yeah, the kind of uh, the kind of action should be translated into would you like some help yourself if you like so uh, from these examples, every country has their uh, has their uh, unique culture and the culture, the unique culture affect the translation. Yeah, in the in the field of translation, we don't separate culture from the the meaning. Yeah, because as I told you just now, so uh, there are so many cultural words that we cannot find in the other countries. For example, just now, European know uh, uh, some kinds of foods like pizza, hot dog. We don't have it in Indonesia or Filipino. So sometimes we, uh, the translator sometimes uh, borrows the, the word. Yeah, from pizza into pizza, the same word and the same pronunciation. We borrow those words into our uh, national language because there is no any equivalent words from uh, uh, in our language. OK, so we continue to the next page. Yeah, this is the. The. Uh, yeah, the most important thing. Yeah, while we are translating, yeah, we have to know uh, first the characters of uh, the language, uh, especially the target language and the source language. Yeah, because we have two languages there and we have to understand the two different cultures between the SLT and TLT so that we can convey the meaning correctly. We can convey the structure natural, yeah? So the first one, what is the characters of language which affect translation? The first one is that meaning has components, yeah? Meaning of components. Meaning components are packaged into lexical items, but they are packaged differently in one language than another, yeah? The first one, the package, we call it morpheme or lexical item. In English, we learn about plurality while we are, we are learning present, simple present tense. We learn about uh, the suffix S and ES. Yeah, what are the functions? Yeah, the first one to defer the subject pronoun and to defer the verbs and to defer the tenses, all right? Because if we don't use as or e as, yeah, yeah, we uh, we think that the subject pronoun is not the third singular person, yeah? They are I, you, we, they. But if we use the third singular person, she, he, it, yeah, in, Telling about daily activities that she or he does, we use as or es in at the end of the the root verb or the base verb. For example, we'll type examples here. Okay, wait a minute. Yeah, for example, in Bahasa Indonesia, we find this sentence. Danu pergi ke sekolah setiap jam 6. Pergi ke sekolah. Uh, 
menggunakan sepedanya setiap hari. Okay. So we have to translate into English. English is the target language. So because Danu in ellipsis I type he, yeah. Danu go. Why we have to use es here? As you can see, the verb go ended uh, with o, o sound, and we have to use e. We have to add e and s after the go word. So Danu goes to school using his bicycle every day. Okay. So we use goes, yeah, instead of only go, because the subject pronoun is he. The subject is the third singular pronoun, done. All right. Yeah. So that's the example of morpheme or lexical items. And the second one, meaning ha, meaning of components. One word in one language may occur in several words in uh, another. For example, in, in English, we find a word I. Okay. Let me, okay. In, in, in English, we find word I, but in Bahasa Indonesia, we can uh, transfer the meaning of I into saya, aku, ku, yeah. Okay, so there are two, three words in Bahasa Indonesia. Sometimes we transfer the word I into saya, and in formal language, we transfer the word I into aku, and sometimes we... Uh, cut the word aku into only ku. For example, buku, buku ku. Yeah. Okay. So there are many words. One word in source language can be transferred into many words in target language. Okay. So the first one meaning of it components. Each word has meaning. Components means lexical items. All right. The second one. The, character, the characteristics of language that affect translation is we find that the same meaning components occur in, uh, let me make it bigger first, okay. The same meaning component occurs in several forms. Yeah, for example, uh, in English, um, we find a word lamb, yeah, lamb, is different from ram and you. This kind of animal is the same animal, but different, uh, we can say different age, different body. Yeah, specifically this, uh, this can be different age or uh, old, yeah. If we call the sheep, that is very young, we call it lamb, yeah? But if the sheep is an adult sheep, we call it, uh, but the, it is a male sheep, yeah? We call it ram. And the female adult sheep, we call it ewe. So there are three words here. We know that the sheep is uh, an animal, but different kind of sheep regarding or related to the 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 age. We can say the age, yeah, the age of the sheep and the the male or female. So they are uh, in different translation, yeah. So again. The same meaning component occur in several forms. Yeah, in Bahasa Indonesia, uh, we just call it domba, right? Okay. Yeah, but in English they have different words. Yeah. 
Okay, the third characteristics of language which affect translation is the same form, the same structure represents several alternative meanings. Yeah, what is the example? Yeah. We find here uh, an example, El Nino Korea. Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce it, so this is Spanish, but I'll try to uh, pronounce in English uh, pronunciation. The boy runs. Remember, runs, they, uh, it, uh, this word has primary meaning. Runs mean an activity using legs, yeah, to, I mean, to reach a, a position. So there's a movement, a fast movement. The boy runs. In Spanish, we, uh, we transfer the meaning of the boy runs into El Nino Corre. Yeah, Corre is runs. All right. But they have different meanings. Yeah, for example, this sentence, let me make a pointer. Yeah. The word runs, yeah. If we use in different sentence, the word run has different meanings, guys. For example, this uh, sentence, his nose runs. Runs here doesn't mean that there is a movement, yeah, uh, by using legs, yeah, to move from one side into the other side in a fast movement. But his nose runs means that the subject is nose, and then we use the uh, same verb runs. It means that in Bahasa Indonesia, hidungku mampet, atau uh, we can say uh, the liquid uh, thing, yeah, comes uh, out from our nose hole, yeah. So his nose runs, yeah. Okay, maybe uh, you you are having uh, you are getting flu and then your nose runs. Runs here. There is no legs movement here. There is no uh, legs movement, but it means that a liquid uh, thing, yeah, comes out from our nose. Okay, so uh, we can differ. Uh, we can get different uh, meanings from the same word if we uh, find in different sentences. So we have to first we have to focus the subject, yeah, because uh, though these four verbs, uh, these four sentences has different uh, subject, but they use the same verb. So the verb one has different meanings. Okay. If if it has different subject. Okay. Uh, so in this uh, kind of uh, meaning, we find two meanings: primary meaning and secondary meaning. We have to pay attention or to. Uh, outline the secondary meaning. Okay, so uh, don't uh, directly transfer the text literal in literal or word per word because sometimes the meaning will be distorted. Yeah, because uh, we don't know the culture, we don't know yet uh, the use of the verb in in the target language text. Okay. Okay, so the same form represents several alternate meanings, means that one word has different meanings, has several meanings. The fourth characters of a characteristic of language which affect translation result is larger context determines the meaning of a word. What does it mean? So as you can see the examples here, yeah, the use of English possessive phrase, the use of possessive pronoun my, yeah, followed by a noun house, 
use. So they have different meanings. Yeah, let, let us uh, discuss the first. Uh, uh, I can say this a close. The house I rent. Yeah, the house I rent has different meaning with the second sentence, the house I live in. Yeah, even though the house, the same uh, particular or the specific kind of uh, thing, yeah, if we think of a house, it has a roof, it has floors, it have also it has also walls. So that's a, a structure of a house. But if we see the differences between uh, sentence one and the sentence two, the house I rent and the house I live, those are the same, uh, uh, those two sentences, okay, use the same uh, phrase, yeah, noun phrase, the house, okay. My house means the house I rent. My house, it it can also mean the house I live in, yeah? So it, it, it refers to the context where the phrase my house we find in the paragraph or in sentence. And also the sentence number three, the house I built. So they have different meanings, right? So sometimes we call it my house because the house was built by us, by uh, you. You can call it your house because the house is the place where uh, where you are living. You, you can say my house is the house that you are telling to the other people is the place that you are living, but you rent it. Yeah, you don't build it. Yeah, you don't. Uh, built by your money but you only rent it but you can say my house yeah so the same possess possessive phrase has different meaning so larger context determines the meaning of a word so a word has different meanings if relates to different context the fifth characteristics of a language will affect the translation result. Okay, the characteristic is, yeah. For example, in English, grammatical markers have their primary function and often have their secondary functions. For example, the use of English preposition. The first uh, sentence, John found a book on the floor. Okay. On followed by the phrase the floor, the position, yeah, the place. So on here has its uh, primary meaning on the surface, up the surface, on the floor. Okay, but if we find the preposition on in this second sentence, John found a book on mathematics on has different meaning means that the preposition on has secondary meaning on here in the field of yeah in the field of mathematics in the field of yeah field of study not the position yeah the third sentence john found a book on tuesday on here means the day yeah the exact day yeah not the surface of a thing the fourth sentence john found a book on sale on sale means that in the condition yeah in the condition yeah so from this example we can uh, conclude that different preposition have a different preposition, uh, the same preposition have different meanings, yeah? Have different meanings if it 
refers to the primary and secondary function. Yeah, as you can see here, we can see the characters of the use of preposition. The meaning of the preposition refers to the the words followed by. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we go on to the six characters characteristic of language. A question may be used per non question. Yes. Yeah, we can uh, sometimes if you read a novel, if we uh, differ from the English novel into Indonesian novel, sometimes if we read in English uh, novel, uh, you think about the structure. I found that this is a uh, uh, active voice of sentence, but in Indonesian, uh, in Bahasa Indonesia on the translation one, yeah, we find that the sentence, the active sentence is translated into passive voice, yeah, okay, because Indonesian is most well known in using passive sentence, all right. So, a question may be used for non-question or vice versa. Non-question may be used for a question sentence. For example, here, Mary, why don't you wash the dishes? Okay, we find here why the question would, why don't you wash the dishes? Why don't you wash the dishes? Even though this is a question, it has different meanings. Sometimes it asks about for, is asks for information. Sometimes it gives a command. Sometimes it gives a suggestion. Yeah. So it depends on the speaker and and the uh, listener. Okay. Yeah. So uh, different uh, kind of sentence. Yeah has different kind of meaning. A verb, the seven uh, characters of language that affect translation is a verb may have several meanings, yeah, based on context. For example, he made the bed. We see here a verb made, yeah, the uh, second verb. Uh, the second save of the uh, bare verb, the root verb make, yeah, the verb one make, and the second verb uh, made, and the third uh, verb is made. So we we know that this is the second uh, second types of verb we use it in simple past tense. He made the bed. This, this sentence may mean either he made means that uh, he used tools to make or to construct a bed, or he put the sh he put the sheets, blanket, and pillow in the need order to make. Okay, made has a Primary meaning means uh, to to construct, yeah. To uh, make means that to construct or to build, to make the bed, yeah. So uh, you use wood, nails, hammer to make the bed. But the word made also has secondary meaning means that you make uh, a bed means that you uh, you arrange the bed uh, tidily using sheet new sheets blanket and pillow or you uh, order the, the these tops yeah orderly and yeah this is the secondary meaning so from my explanation, I do hope you understand what is the difference between primary meaning and secondary meaning. OK, the same verb made, but it has primary meaning made and the secondary uh, meaning. Put the sheets, blanket and pillow, make the bed means that you make the bed, you construct the bed by using hammer, wood, nails, but 
if you uh, want to say that you make the bed, means that you put the sheets, blanket, and pillow in the neat order. Yeah, orderly. Yeah. Okay. So that's the difference between primary and secondary meaning. The eight characteristics of language which uh, affect the translation result is that a single meaning may be expressed in variety of forms. For example, the meaning of the, the sentence, the cat is black, yeah, may be expressed by several forms. Yeah, this is, I can say this is a non-verbial sentence, it means there is no any verb here because we use to be. So the cat is black, we can transfer, we can form this English sentence, we can form into different structures in English also. The cat is black, the black cat, or the cat which is black. Okay, so the a form of a sentence, yeah, a form, of a sentence, yeah, can be transferred into different forms in either language or in this uh, in the same language. Okay, so that's the eight characteristics of a language. The ninth characteristics of language is different surface structure or word used in the sentence may have the same meaning. Okay, even though these three sentences are this uh, uh, are different in forms, but they have uh, same meaning. Is this place taken? Is there anyone sitting here? May I sit here? Means that we need uh, the seat. Yeah, we need to sit uh on the empty seat that we are asking for uh the other for the other people okay the second criteria the characteristics of different service structure is the meaning essentially the same in the following english sentences for example others blame jones Others blame John because of the difficulty. It's the same meaning with others. Blame John for the difficulty. Or we can transfer the, uh, the different in different structure. Others blame the difficulty on John. We can say also others said John was responsible for difficulty. Or we can say others accuse John of being responsible for the difficulty. So these five sentences are different in structure but they have a or they same meaning so that's the 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 eight characters of uh language that uh, affect the translation result in the other or another language okay so we have to conclude yeah so in translation there are a great variety of ways in which form expresses meaning okay the first one one-to-one -one correlation when a form is being used in its primary meaning then there is a one-to-one -one correlation means that this is called primary meaning yeah uh, we can transfer the text by its uh, literal meaning, its equivalent meaning. But we, if we transfer the word or the lexical item uh, literally and it sounds unnatural, so it may be, it may have a secondary meaning. Okay. Or, the word is not found in another language or in the target language. It means skewing. Skewing means that it is hard to find the equivalent word or the cultural word is there is no any name in the target language. So it's called skewing. Yeah, there is no uh, uh, 
an equivalent word so we find it very difficult to transfer it and sometimes we just omit the translation but uh, instead of omit the translation of the difficult word we uh, can explain it or we can paraphrase it okay so uh, there are a great variety of ways in which form expresses the meaning okay so one uh, one to one correlation and sorry and scoring okay why do i stick on the same page it doesn't work wait a minute please I have a bad connection. Let me see if it works. So we conclude. The fact is that the language Okay, let me review. The fact is a language is a complex set of skewed relationship between meaning and form. To translate the form of one language literally according to the uh, corresponding form in another language would often change the meaning or will result a natural translation in a second language for example it is six o'clock if we translate literally in bahasa indonesia into ini adalah enam jam it doesn't sound natural it the di distorts the meaning so ini adalah jam enam the this is not uh, an exact meaning yeah from this sentence but if we transfer it in idiomatic uh, way so we find the good translation the bad translation is saat ini jam 6 tepat okay so uh, many experts uh, say that uh, before uh, we translate literally uh, the target text into the source uh, the source text into target text think over about uh, the the secondary meaning yeah as i say just now even though we try to translate literally in the first while we are reading our translation result and just underline or focus on the unnatural uh, sentence yeah means that we don't transfer the meaning correctly so it may have a secondary meaning or it is cooing there is no uh, uh, equivalent word yeah for translating the the cultural word so we have many strategies later on we will study about the strategies how to overcome translation problems if the source language and uh, receptor language are closely related language, there will be much correspondence of form between the source text and the translation. But it seldom happens because I, I told you just now, every language has its own unique form. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you have an assignment. Okay. I type here the topic uh, what you have to do is you have to find out some examples of translation work which show that the characteristic or your national language affect the translation result uh, in English so we have uh, because you are from Philippines and uh, Indonesian so find out uh, maybe uh, uh novels or songs or poems or any kinds of text yeah that has been that have been translated into your uh language so uh you have to find yeah you have to find we have just now how many characters 10 yeah more uh, yeah 10 characteristics of language which uh affect the translation result for example in Bahasa Indonesia, uh, if you find the the para pria, so how can it uh, how 
can uh, it translate it into English? Para pria, okay, men's. Yeah, as I told you, so the first form uh, uh, components of meaning. Yeah, one word may have uh, many uh, words in target language. One word in source language text may have uh, many words in source language text. Okay, so you have to find out some examples from the translation work and then uh, I need you to present your uh, the result of your work next week. So, ladies and gentlemen, if I do hope my explanation will be clear to you because I translated uh, fully in English. Yeah, uh, I do hope uh, my explanation uh, will be clear to you. But if you are still confused with this assignment, you can chat. You can uh, put your question on our WhatsApp group. Later on, I will uh, uh, checking our whatsapp group if i find uh, if there are any questions from you i will uh, answer it directly i will answer them directly so please do your assignment as best as you can and it will be your score in this course so let me remind you there are many characters yeah one two three four five six seven eight nine if i only nine yeah so I have explained there are nine characteristics of language which the nine characteristics will affect our translation result. So maybe after reading the, the work, the translation work, maybe you only find only five or six or four. Yeah, so you have to analyze. Yeah, you have to analyze. I don't uh, force, force you to find all these three character, uh, all these nine characteristic. If you don't find any uh, examples related to this characteristic of language in your national language, so you have, yeah, you have to skip it. Yeah. For example, as I told you just now, I don't know in F Filipino uh, whether you have uh, plural or singular uh, kinds of noun or verbs but in Bahasa Indonesia we have it for example if we translate the word men men sorry let me make in a different okay for example if you find the word men with a not a this is e yeah in english this is approval from from men so if you find the word men with e vowel e we have to translate para priya so the word para it refers to uh, plural form, yeah, plural form of the noun followed by the para, yeah. You know, in Philip in Filipino, you find it or not, okay? Yes. So, I uh, will make it bigger. Yeah, this is your assignment. Let me read it to you. Find out some example of translation work. Sorry. Translation work which show the characteristics. The characteristics. 
pointer yeah which show let me underline this phrase characteristics of your national language so if you are indonesian uh citizen so you're you have to find english and uh, indonesian translation and if you are from philippines you find the translation from english into filipino or Filipo filipino into english vice versa so you can find uh, the characteristic of your national language and you will see it, uh, whether it affects the translation result or not okay so you are going to you have to present your work next week yeah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen i will end this meeting and i do hope this uh, topic will be benefit will uh, add your knowledge about translation theory and later on uh, if you will be a translator this topic will be helpful for you to do your translation or to process your translation uh and that's all thank you so much i'll see you next week bye bye i'll see you next week thank you so much god bless you all